Oscillatory motion is an important physical occurrence that will often come up in both physics classes and everyday life. The simplest and most often used example is to imagine a block attached to a spring. Pull the block and it will stretch the spring past the position it started at and come back, oscillating around its starting position at a certain rate. Guitar strings, ferris wheels, and even the shocks in a car exhibit some form of this oscillatory motion. Let's be a little more specific and define oscillatory motion as repetitive motion back and forth about an equilibrium that is periodic. The period and the amplitude typically characterize this motion. The period is the time required to complete one full oscillation. The amplitude is the maximum displacement of the object from equilibrium. Imagine sitting on a ferris wheel. If you were to plot your height above the ground as a function of time, it might look something like the following. You start off closest to the ground at zero height. After a little bit of time has elapsed, you're halfway up the ferris wheel. After more time has elapsed, you're all the way at the top. You continue this circular motion heading down the ferris wheel until you arrive back at your starting position. You can continue this motion around the ferris wheel. This type of oscillatory motion is called sinusoidal motion and can be described by a cosine function where x is the displacement from equilibrium, a is the amplitude of oscillation, capital T is the period of oscillation, and little t is the time. In order to understand how each of these parameters affects the motion, let's build ourselves a model using an Excel spreadsheet. First, open a new Excel document. Before we get started, we need to configure Excel to allow us to calculate values iteratively. Click on the Office button in the top left-hand corner. Click on Excel Options, and then click on Formulas. In this window, click on Enable Iterative Calculation. Change the maximum iterations to 1, and the maximum change to 0 0.1. Hit OK, and we are ready to start building our demo. Start by adding the titles of the columns. We are skipping the first few rows as we will need them later. Label the second column from the left, time, and the column to the right of that, displacement. We will start by filling in the values for time. Enter zero in the first row. For this demonstration, we choose to increment the time in steps of 0.05 seconds. In the row below, enter equals B7 plus 0.05 and hit enter. Excel will calculate the value for you and display it in the second row. Drag this equation down until the last time reads 2 seconds. Dragging the equation down in this manner tells Excel to copy and paste the original equation but to increment the value of the cell by 1. Here, that means the B8 will become B9 in the cell below it, and B10 in the cell below that. In this way, we can generate times separated by 0.05 seconds, all the way up to 2 seconds. Now, let's pick values for our parameters we need to set the period and the amplitude. Enter the titles period into A1 and amplitude into A2. For now, let's choose a period of two seconds per oscillation and an amplitude of one. 
Sometimes, instead of referring to the period of the oscillation, the frequency will be used. The frequency, f, is the number of oscillations per second and is related to the period by f equals 1 over capital T. Recall that circular motion may also be characterized by its angular velocity omega. Angular velocity is related to the period by omega equals 2 pi over capital T. Let's convert the period we entered into angular velocity. First, enter the title angular velocity into A3. Then, enter the equation that will convert the period we have already entered into angular velocity, namely, equals 2 times pi divided by b1. Lastly, to illustrate the motion, we add a counter that will increment during each calculation. We'll choose to increment our counter by 0 0.1. First, enter the title. In E1, enter equals E1 plus 0 0.1, and hit enter. On each subsequent calculation of the spreadsheet, this counter will increment by 0 0.1. In other words, this counter effectively increases the time. We are now ready to calculate the displacement at each time. Looking back at our equation, we write equals the amplitude B2 times cosine of the angular velocity B3 times the time B7 plus our counter E1. Compare the equation we have entered to our original equation. Can you identify each parameter as we have entered it? Look at the counter E1. In our equation, this is in reality adding a phase constant. However, it is just added to increment the time. The dollar signs in this equation tell Excel to always use the same cell when evaluating the equation, even when we drag the equation down using the technique we used before. Finally, drag this equation down to the last time. Now we are ready to plot our function and see oscillatory motion in action. To create a graph, highlight the values in the time and displacement columns by clicking and dragging your mouse over them. At the top of the page, click on Insert, and then choose XY Scatter. Then choose Smooth Line Scatter. And there you have it, a graph of a cosine function is created for you. Excel has a useful function that allows the user to reevaluate every equation in the spreadsheet. Do this by holding Shift and pressing F9 and watch what happens to the graph. If you continue pressing F9, you can see that this demo allows us to observe sinusoidal motion. Notice, while we have been pressing F9, we have also been increasing our counter by 0 0.1. In reality, this just increases the time in the argument of the cosine function. Let's try experimenting with some of the parameters in this demo. First, let's try changing the amplitude. What do you think will happen if we increase the amplitude to 10? Hold Shift and hit F9 and see what happens. The peaks on our graph increase, but everything else stays the same. The peaks and the troughs are now located at minus 10 and plus 10, whereas before, when the amplitude was 1, they were located at minus 1 and plus 1. What about if we change the period? If we make the period 5 instead of 2, what will happen to the angular velocity?
we can see that the angular velocity decreased as it is inversely proportional to the period. Subsequently, the spacing between peaks and troughs, the period on our graph, increased. Let's change the period to 0 0.5, which means that we should have two oscillations per second, or one every 0 0.5 seconds. Continue changing these parameters and exploring their effects on sinusoidal motion until you feel confident in your ability to predict what will happen as you change them.